The 4th of July is just around the corner, so for this episode, we're covering the patriotic classic, American Ninja. The American Ninja. Welcome everyone to another episode of Castle Classic Movies, bringing you news you can enjoy from the comfort of your couch, bed, favorite chair, or the crapper. I'm your host, Chris Castillo. The 1970s gave us kung fu flicks. The 1980s brought with it a surge in ninja movies, most of them not so great films like Ninja Terminator, Mafia vs. Ninja, Bionic Ninja, and Ninja 3, The Domination. But one film overlooked all others, spawning not one, not two, but four sequels. American Ninja is a 1985 martial arts action film starring Mark Dudikoff and is produced by Canon Films, the same company that brought you last episode's Masters of the Universe. Fun fact, this production company eventually went out of business in 1994. The movie portrays Private Joe Armstrong, an old-fashioned tough guy with a mysterious past who's stationed in the Philippines. Doesn't even flinch. When he ends up fighting off ninjas while saving Patricia, the daughter of the Colonel and our conventional damsel in distress from a hijacking attempt. During the hijack, things get a little physical as our damsel gets mad she's about to miss her Zuma class and starts mouthing off to one of the bad guys, when he then proceeds to slap her in the face. Our guy, now seeing this as a good opportunity to impress the babe, decides to take on the hijackers. He succeeds and saves the girl, but at the cost of the rest of the platoon, that gets sliced up by ninjas who show up midway through the fight. What are Japanese ninjas dressed in black garb made for stealthy attacks at night doing in the Philippines fighting in 900 degree broad daylight? Due to his actions, Joe's popularity with his fellow GIs takes a nosedive. While performing chores on the base, Joe is goaded into a fight. Are you some kind of a badass karate boy? By Corporal Curtis Jackson, AKA 80s 50 Cent. I can't see my legs. 80s 50 Cent proves no match for Joe's ninjutsu expertise. And just like the end of any after school backyard brawl, the boys become friends. And Curtis Jackson is man enough to admit what he's wrong. Outside of doing other badass stuff, our guy remembers very little of his past. But one thing is obvious, our main man wants to make some truffle butter with the boss's daughter. <laughs> yeah. The grateful Patricia organizes a date for herself and Joe. I had to see you. So 80's 50 Cent lends our boy his motorcycle because motorcycles are cool and sneaks off the base in, of course, a very badass way. The couple is caught during dinner by payrolled black marketeer Victor Ortega, a seemingly confused Frenchman with the same last name as a very popular Mexican brand of salsa. Ortega salsa. You'll never know it comes out of a jar. The following day, to get Joe out of the way, Ortega sets up a trap for him in an abandoned warehouse. Ninjas show up and ambush our main man who easily defeats them all. Then, Joe's truck is stolen and he gives chase using a motorcycle because again, motorcycles are cool. The truck driver runs Joe off the road. Thinking he turned homeboy into a meat pancake, the driver brings the truck to Ortega's salsa compound and is brought to the heart of the operation a very color-coordinated ninja training camp. Ortega is paying the Black Star order for weapons stolen from the army, which he then resells to the highest bidder. Joe is discovered by the Renta ninjas, but escapes with the aid of Ortega's silent gardener, Shinyuki, who has a mysterious connection with our protagonist. Who are you? You will know when the time is right. Joe gets back to base where he's arrested by military police under the false accusation that he's the one peddling the arms. But our little Billy Badass ain't going down without a fight and escapes into the night. While this is going down, the Colonel meets with Ortega and it turns out that the Colonel has been in the illegal salsa business the whole time. But he's not liking how things are going and wants to pull out. Ortega, anticipating this, has the ninja master kidnap Patricia. Joe returns to Ortega's compound where he is reunited with Shin Yuki. It is then revealed that Shin Yuki, a former Japanese soldier, adopted Joe after the boy's parents died. He trained Joe in the ways of ninjutsu until the two were separated by a bomb blast. 
Now Shinyuki hooks him up with an arsenal of ass-kicking equipment, and they launch a surprise attack on the Black Star camp. <laughs> when the f*** did ninjas get lasers? Meanwhile, the colonel leads his own assault on the compound in order to rescue his daughter. The confused French Spaniard has decided to leave the condiment business behind and flees by helicopter with Patricia as his hostage. Joe's too cool to lose now, so he jumps for the chopper, shows off some ninja warrior skills, and saves Patricia just before 80's 50 Cent brings us that iconic action movie explosion we've been waiting for. If you'd like to check out this movie, you can find it on dailymotion.com and YouTube. Well. That wraps it up for another episode, so remember to like and subscribe so you can get updates on movies that were made when cassette was still a word. Hey kids, listen up! Power Rangers cassettes, Power Rangers book and cassettes coming your way. So look for Power Rangers cassettes and Power Rangers book and cassettes wherever music is sold. And if you have a movie in mind or just want to share your thoughts, kindly leave them in the comment section down below. Until next time viewers, you stay safe and stay classy. <laughs>